What up YouTube? Moose coming at you once again with another unboxing video. Today we are taking a look at this Airfix Buccaneer in 148 scale, so let's get started. Alright, so like I said, this is the Airfix Blackburn Buccaneer S. 2C slash D variant in 148 scale. Um, it is kit A12102. As you can tell, it is a very big box, um, big old model inside. On this side, there's not much. The box art's pretty plain. On the one end, though, they do show you there's four different markings that you can build, and they tell you a little bit about the, uh, the Buccaneer over here. Um, and that's about it. So let me get the top off and we'll dig into the box. All right. So we'll start with the instructions as usual. Um, they're typical format for Airfix. They're in like a black, white, red. You know, they're not fully in color, but they do the job on a nice, normal, plain piece of paper. So right off the bat, you have to pick which of the schemes you're going to do because the ordinance on the bottom differs depending on which one you're doing. Um, so as you can see, there are four versions of it. And then immediately knowing that you have to pick the scheme, there are different holes you need to drill on the bottom side for that ordinance that differs across all of them. So, and then they also show you what ordinance gets strapped onto the bottom of it, if you, depending on which one you do. So then the first page of the instructions themselves get this into the camera a little better just covers the different decals that go across through the cockpit you know from the instrument panel to the side panels to the seats and whatnot then going from there as you can tell we build up both pairs of ejection seats quite a bit of detail on them they include even a decal for the seat the harnesses there um, again, there's some color differences, or not color differences, part differences up here for the seats depending on which scheme you build. And then at the bottom there is a difference in the instrument panels themselves as well depending on which scheme you go with. So you have to make sure you pay attention from the get-go. After that we take the, the tub of the cockpit and we fit the front nose gear bay to that for adding some detail through the cockpit, you know, the side panels and stuff like that, the instrument panel, joystick, and things like that through there. The next page, then we fit the bulkhead at the rear of the cockpit. Um, you stick in the front instrument panel, and they specifically call out, you're not supposed to glue in one spot of it not sure what the deal is with that. I don't know if it's just a fitment issue later. If you glue it down, you might not get an angle correct or something like that. You put in the back seat, front seat. The front seat has the rear seats, panel, instrument panel, you know, instrumentation on it. Then down here in step 22, we glue a couple of cone pieces together and they call out to put some 15 grams of weight into that and you seal it all in. Makes its own little thing and then you add some detail to the sidewall of the fuselage again some painting and then you take that piece from the previous step with the weight and you put it inside which is really neat encapsulates it you don't have to worry about weights coming out and going all over the place if they don't stay step 26 we're told to drill some holes out if we want to put the ladders 27 again is a repeat of the other side then finally in 28 we put the cockpit in, sandwich the other side, and they call out that it's supposed to click into place. There's like some locating tabs to help with that before putting some cowling and a few more details. Step 32 then, we start onto what I think is a pretty cool feature of this kit. So we're building up some internal stuff for the engine compartments slash landing gear bay for the main areas. So we see there's two parts to that. Some like bulkheads and things like that get fit onto there as well. And then we add in some like sidewall details before we drop that onto the lower half of the fuselage here in step 37. So a lot of detail, 
which is pretty cool, I think. Then we come over here to step 38. We build a little bit more of like the intake exhaust um, plumbing. And then in step 41, we actually do build an engine up and add some little details to that. And you have the option, it says here in the text, that you have to decide if you want to show the engine off or just seal it shut. But you still have to build the engine, I guess, to make sure everything locates. So as we can see here in step 43, the engine is getting fit. Go to the next page and we add some details to the engine. Of course, you'd omit that if you're not gonna leave the cover open. They include a piece that is a mask that you have to use to help, because you have to cut out where that engine opening is. And it's to help you cut that to the correct size for later, because obviously if you're removing that, you're gonna destroy this part of it. So they give you this to make sure that everything still lines up and fits correctly. And, yeah. So on the next page, we start building up some like pylons and our ailerons. And then from there, we put the top half of the fuselage on. And then at this point, you have to decide as well, you have the option of building this with the wings extended or folded. Um, so depending on what you decide for that, you have some variances and you have to skip steps. So if you're building it folded, you follow these steps here now, which show you how to put like the hinge in, build the wings up with like the end caps and everything like that and the detail for that. Going to the next page, they show you the bottom parts of where you need to cut everything that you should have already done in this first couple steps for sandwiching that together. Oh, nope, I take this back. So step 59 here, as we can see, is if you do the wings folded. So these would be what you'd skip if you were doing it, or extended, excuse me. Folded, you'd do the other. You gotta scrape off a little bit of detail there. Step 64, then we're putting the upper half on with those wings if you're just needing to do it with the wings extended. And then down here, we go over some more detail for the engine bay and Again, they tell you to use that H10 part, and I wouldn't have thought of this myself. Use part H10 as a mask when painting the model. So you can keep your model pristine and you don't ruin it when you're painting, you know, or have to mask off the engine bay. They give you that piece to put over it temporarily. Of course, you can't glue it down to do it, and then you can come back and put the open access on top. Next page, then we build up the rear part of the fuselage. Um, you have to decide at that point, well, I guess not right away, I take that back. You build that up, you fit that to the rear of the main part of the fuselage that you've done up till now, and then we fit the cockpit to the front of that, making it all one big long piece. I like the compartmentalized approach to it, you know, it's not one huge long side fuselage, as long as it fits up well, that will be seen when I build it. Next page, then we start building the intakes and the lips of them and, you know, the cowlings at the exhaust at the rear. From there, we fit flaps on. You can do them extended, retracted. Um, oh, maybe those are the flaps. I'm not sure. Flaps, ailerons, stabilizers. I don't know the correct termage for that. From there, then we go and we build the rear elevator, and the controls. And again, there's a difference here at the top of that, depending on which paint scheme you go with, as well as the rear bit of it. So it all ends up fitting on the same, and then you apply your control surfaces down here at the bottom of that page. Next page, you have to decide, do you want the speed brakes open or not? Um, of course, it's a lot simpler if you're just doing a the speed brakes closed, you just sandwich it all together, put it on, but otherwise they give you the detail there. Next page, we just kind of fit details around the bomb bay below it, as well as some like plumbing inside of it and whatnot. You know, a lot of great detail, like I said. Over here on page 28, then we build the front landing gear, attach it, build the main landing gear, attach all that. They show you how it should be sitting on its wheels, then when you put those on, 
adding the gear bay doors. Then page 30, again, more details, you know, if you want the um, tow hook and stuff like that, you know, little pedo tubes, things like that fit through. Then the next page, putting in the pilot if you want him there. There's variants on the, um, if you want the wiper blades or not. You can use the one without the wiper blade if you want to use like photo etch. Down, you know, you have to, I believe you have to supply your own photo etch. I haven't seen any photo etch in the kit, but they give you that option. So then again, the canopy opener closed, a few more like antenna across, the refueling probe sticking out the front. And from there we go into the different ordnance you can attach. So there's some TV Martell anti-shipping missiles. Martell AS-37 anti-radiation missile. Martell TV guidance data link pod. There's a rocket launcher, a slipper tank. You know, they show you how to build all that stuff up. Um, thousand, pound, thousand pound bombs. And then they show you how to fit all that up into the, the weapons bay below. Finally, on the last page here, we build the ladders to attach. If you want to pose it on the ground, they give you covers for the intake and the exhausts. And then on the back page, they show you how to attach the wings if you do it folded. So that's it with the instructions. The one cool thing with this kit, so they include a separate sheet here of the common stencil data and then there's two sheets in full color that have the four different markings that you can do with all their relevant decals. And speaking of decals, the decal sheet for this one is really big, as you can see. Um, so this big block up here is for everybody, and then they separate it out there from the very diff various different ones. Here you can see the uh, seat belts, harnesses, which is nice. Everything looks great as well. All right, so the first sprue, let me get in a little closer, has the seats of the plane, the main landing gear, some of the wheels, some gear bay doors, the, one of the instrument panels. Um, I would like to have some pictures up on my website. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that um, of the instrument panels. I mean, everything looks nice and crisp. I would hope so, it's a new kit. So again, that's Sprue G. Let me adjust my lighting here. It's a little shadowy at the moment. The next sprue is sprue H. This one looks to have a lot of the detail stuff like the pods. Um, looks like the speed brake parts back here, your intake and exhaust covers, the ladders. There's some more gear bay doors back there. Some of the plumbing that runs through, I'm assuming that's probably for the engine. So again, I have pictures up on my website, hopefully. I'll give you a quick look at that. I mean, there's good detail to be seen. Oh, here's that, that mask piece they were talking about. So see, it even says mask. And it's got a recess there that I'm assuming is, there's a part that goes underneath it that hopefully that'll clear it. The, <coughs> excuse me. Next piece, sprue, excuse me, is sprue E. This one has the bottom of the, looks like it might be the, the bomb bay door. Um, these look like pods. Again, I'm not familiar with this aircraft. Those look like pylons, like the rockets there. This here, I think, is where the um, 
like a arrestor hook sits. So good detail. I don't know how you, well you're gonna be able to see that the lights kind of not helping me here. All right, so the next sprue is sprue C, and as you can see, it is a very big sprue. We have the upper and the lower parts of the wings here, as well as the rear elevators. Um, there's like part of the speed brake there. Looks like maybe like some flaps, ailerons, stuff like that. Here we can see the parts of the hinge if you do the wings folded up, as well as if you do them extended, and there's a few other bits here. Now, I was noticing off camera when I was pulling this out of the bag, that the ejector pin marks here are very, very pronounced, which on these might not be too bad because obviously there's gonna be a little bit of an air gap. But I noticed here, these protrude greatly. This sits flush, and if we look over here, those key in and sit flush, and those also stick up. So there's gonna be a lot of sanding needed on those pins there. But once done, I think it'll sit down real well. So like I said, that's spruce C. Sprue D has a bunch of our missiles. And I was also noticing as well, they have a very unique way that they assemble the missiles on this. I didn't even pay attention to this when I was doing the instructions. But here we can see the two halves of like the body, or it might be one of those, yeah. And then we have the fin assemblies over here, of which there's two variants of them. And these two mate together, and then they kind of stick into the middle of that. I actually like that idea if it works, because I can't tell you how many times I try getting fins at perfect 90 degrees on the missiles, and they don't work, they slide. So I'm curious if that'll work. Here we can see a bunch of the bombs. Those might be those slip tanks there, the other half of those. So those look pretty good. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see any detail or not, because again, the lighting's not that great, but I promise it is there. In the final bag, we find sprue B. So here we have, yo, I'm not sure what those are. Sure, yeah. Those, oh. The, um, I think it might be the speed brake section, the actual like housing, if open or closed and whatnot. Um, so here we see a bunch of the internals for like the engine. We see our pilots here. There's some like sidewall detail there. This is that little part that I said encapsulates the, um, the weight, you gotta put it in there. We can see some of the internal structure for like the engine and whatnot as well. One thing I'm noticing even from this angle is I don't know if this is gonna pick it up. The great, great detail on those blades there. And then the actual jet engine. Flip it over, I don't think there's any detail on the backside. Yeah, so that's sprue B. The final styrene sprue is sprue A, and this is where the bulk of the bigger pieces of the plane sit. So here actually we see, if you do the speed brake open, it's actually one piece already, which is kind of cool, so you just fit the clamshells to the back side of that. Here we have the front of the fuselage, the bottom, the top, the rear, the cockpit tub, and then some of like the shrouds that go around the intake and exhaust. And of course, I will bring you in the best I can to show you detail. Lots of great rivet lines and stuff, lots of detail. I mean, that's a pretty impressive bomb bay. Here's the top of the plane. Again, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this detail on here. You'll have to go to my website for the review. I'll have some actual photos. You might be able to see it there cockpit tubs kind of bland but again all the panels fit to that so looks pretty good to me the final sprue is the clear sprue and 
right off the bat I'm noticing this canopy here has some scratch marks in it that one's clear and I gotta say I mean it's hard to show you let me see if I can zoom in way down it might be a little bit easier very very clear doesn't seem to have much distortion at all I mean obviously other than what it would have and then this canopy here I don't know if you'll be able to make it out because of the light shining the way it is actually has like the deck cord for rejection molded into it so here we have front canopy the one on the right you might be able to see there's the windshield wiper the one on the left doesn't have I'm not sure why they did the wing tips clear I'll have to look into that at some point but that's it Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I'll catch you all the next time. Have a good one.